Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 18th of September. Indian government bans electronic cigarettes. Pashtuns hold protest in Geneva against atrocities by Pakistan Army. And death toll rises to 48 in twin blasts in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. India's Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman announced on Wednesday that electronic cigarettes will be banned in the country with immediate effect. The decision, she said, was taken as they pose health risk to people, especially the youth. The Indian government on Wednesday approved an ordinance prohibiting the manufacture and sale of e-cigarettes or electronic cigarettes in the country. Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman announcing the move said that the cabinet passed a decision making the production, manufacturing, import, export, transport, sale, distribution or advertisements of e-cigarettes a cognizable offence. Sita Raman, who had headed a group of ministers or GOM, said the decision was taken as they pose health risk to people, especially the youth. What does the ban mean? It means production, manufacturing, import, export, transport or sale or even distribution and storage and advertisement relating e-cigarettes are all banned. The cabinet therefore has taken this clear decision about banning e-cigarettes in all these nine forms. E-cigarettes do not burn tobacco but use a heating element to vaporize liquid nicotine, which the user inhales. These are not licensed in India and are often marketed as products to help smokers quit and harmless than cigarette. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said India's position on Pakistan-administered Kashmir was clear and it expects to have a physical jurisdiction over the territory one day. This comes as India ups the ante ahead of a likely high disciple showdown with Pakistan at the United Nations next week. India's Foreign Minister Subramanyam Jay Shankar on Tuesday said that cross-border terrorism emanating from Pakistan should be the first topic to be taken up for any India-Pakistan talks. Briefing media for the first time ever since taking the ministerial office, Jay Shankar said that the part of Kashmir controlled by Pakistan belongs to India and that he expected India to gain physical control over it one day. On abrogation of Article 370 that granted special status to Jammu and Kashmir, he contended that the world understands New Delhi's case on Jammu and Kashmir. POK, yes, uh, our position on POK is, has always been and will always be very clear. Uh, POK uh, is part of India and we ex you know, expect one day that it will, uh, we will have the uh, jurisdiction uh, physical jurisdiction over it. Jashankar's comment sets the Indian agenda for the upcoming UN General Assembly, where India is expected to defend its actions regarding Kashmir. India last month abrogated Jammu and Kashmir's special status, as well as announced bifurcation of the state into two union territories. This move was severely criticized by Pakistan, with its Prime Minister Imran Khan making highly provocative anti-India rhetoric. It is from Pakistan. A massive protest broke out in Pakistan's Karachi city on Tuesday over a suspected hate crime where Namrata Chandani, a Sindhi Hindu medical student, was found dead in her hostel room on Monday. Chandani was found lying on a cot with a rope tied to her neck while her room was locked from inside. Protesters voiced anger against the government and demanded justice for her. 
Namrita's family has alleged that she was killed because she belonged to a minority community. The mystery around her death has raised suspicions with people questioning whether it was a case of forced conversion, as several such cases have come to the fore, highlighting religious persecution in Pakistan. Moving on, Pashtun activists held a protest outside the UN office on Tuesday to highlight ongoing human rights violations by the Pakistan Army and intelligence agencies. They expressed concerns over targeting of ethnic Pashtuns in so-called military operations against terrorism. The Pashtun Tahafuz movement or PTM on Tuesday held a protest against the Pakistan Army and its intelligence agencies in front of the United Nations office in Geneva. Pashtun activists from across Europe gathered to express their concerns over ongoing human rights violations in Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and federally administered tribal areas of Fata. They blame that hundreds of Pashtuns are still missing and many have been killed by the Pakistan Army in its so-called military action against terrorists in the Pashtun-dominated areas. They highlighted innocent Pashtuns have been targets of military operations, ethnic stereotyping and abductions by the Pakistani security forces for past several years. We demand from the international community to look into this matter and establish or make an international inquiry commission on what has happened in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Fata for the, in the last 17 years. Everybody knows that Pashtuns have been killed massively in this area. According to estimates, 75,000 Pashtuns have been killed. That were exploit our resources, that were damage our culture, that were damage our language, and so many things are happening to destroy Pashtun and damage Pashtuns. So that is the reason that Pashtun are peeling it, they are resisting it, and they are raising their voice. Activists have long alleged that Pakistani army functions along with militant groups in Pashtun-dominated areas and indiscriminately uses brute force against innocent people. The PTM activists also launched a poster campaign outside the UN office and have been highlighting the issue on social media under hashtag Stop Pashtun Genocide. The United Nations Security Council unanimously agreed on Tuesday to extend its political mission in Afghanistan. Last-minute talks overcame a Chinese threat to use its veto if there was no reference to Beijing's Global Belt and Road Initiative. The United Nations Security Council unanimously agreed on Tuesday to extend a political mission in Afghanistan, known as United Nations Assistance Mission in Afghanistan, or UNEMA, after last-minute talks. The move overcame a Chinese threat to veto if there was no reference to Beijing's Global Belt and Road Infrastructure Project. The resolutions mandating UNEMA in 2016, 2017 and 2018 all included a reference welcoming and urging efforts like China's Belt and Road Initiative to facilitate trade and transit. But the United States and some other council members in March said they could no longer accept that language. I should note that the reason we cannot empower the mission with a stronger substantive mandate today is a member's insistence on language that highlights national political priorities rather than ways in which we can most effectively assist the people and government of Afghanistan. A planned vote on Monday was delayed to Tuesday to allow for further negotiations at the UN Security Council as diplomats said China had signaled it was prepared to veto the text. To pass, a resolution needs nine votes in favor and no vetoes by the United States China, France, Russia and Britain. Death toll has climbed to at least 48 in two separate suicide bombing in Afghanistan, which happened on Tuesday. Taliban claimed responsibility for both the attacks which came days after collapsed peace talks with the United States and just 11 days ahead of the presidential election. Death toll climbed to at least 48 in two separate bombings in Afghanistan's capital city Kabul and Parwan province on Tuesday, Afghanistan's Interior Ministry officials confirmed. The deadliest attack took place in Charikar, the capital of Parwan province, which targeted an election rally 
killing at least 26 people and injuring more than 40. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, who is seeking a second five-year term in voting on September 28, was due to address the rally when a bomber attacked the gathering. In the Kabul attack, a suicide bomber blew himself up near the police district 9 in the city, killing at least 22 people and wounding 38, officials said. The Taliban claimed both the attacks on Tuesday, which happened 11 days before the presidential election, which Taliban commanders have vowed to disrupt. In from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan Parliament Speaker Karu Jaisuriya has kept a condition for considering the request for him contesting in upcoming presidential poll. Jaisuriya said he will consider to be a candidate only if he finds a political alliance that is ready to abolish executive presidency in the country. Speaker of Sri Lanka's Parliament Karu Jaisuriya has said he will consider the requests made to him to be the presidential candidate only if he finds a political alliance that is ready to abolish executive presidency in the country. Jaisuri on Tuesday said over the past few weeks, several members of the clergy, representatives of civil society, intellectuals and professionals have reached out to him requesting to consider contesting for the presidential election as a candidate. He said their common request is that he consider contesting as a candidate for the upcoming poll on a platform encompassing certain national issues. The remark by the speaker comes as the island nation is set to hold its presidential election between November and December this year. President in Sri Lanka is both the head of the state and head of the government. Since 1978, most prime ministers have served as mayor deputies to the executive presidency while at times serve as the de facto head of the government. The Indian Army will soon conduct recruitment rallies in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir to select capable young candidates for various posts, an official said on Tuesday. More than 2,500 vacancies are said to be released for the recruitment into Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry Regiment. The Indian Army is about to conduct recruitment rallies in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir soon to select capable applicants for various posts in the Army, an official said on Tuesday. More than 2,500 vacancies have been released for recruitment into Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry or Jaklai Regiment of the Indian Army. The Army recruiting offices of Jammu and Srinagar and Jaklai Regimental Centre would be conducting the rallies to select the recruits for the vacancies. 2780 vacancy have been released for recruitment into Jaklai. ARO Jammu, ARO Srinagar and Jaklai Regimental Centre would be conducting rallies to select the recruits for these many vacancies. The drive comes as Kashmir Valley continues to be under a tight security cover since August 5, when the special status of Jammu and Kashmir was revoked and the region was bifurcated into two union territories. The infantry regiment mostly consists of volunteers from Jammu and Kashmir. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian government bans electronic cigarettes. Pashtuns hold protest in Geneva against atrocities by Pakistan army. And death toll rises to 48 in twin blasts in Afghanistan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.